I was right in the middle of working on a video about the Perseverance rover when all of a sudden SpaceX did this. So I thought maybe I should make a quick video about SN8 and what has just happened. So let's talk about that. The test flight occurred in Boca Chica, Texas on December 9th of 2020. The vehicle itself is named SN8 or serial number 8 associated with the prototype of the Starship vehicle. If you aren't familiar with Starship, it's essentially the name for the second stage of the larger rocket that SpaceX is developing. When SpaceX talks about making humanity a multiplanetary species, well, Starship is the main component of it. It's what will hopefully land people on the moon and Mars, and will maybe revolutionize the spaceflight industry even further than SpaceX already has. Over the last two years, SpaceX has been testing many prototypes of the Starship vehicle starting small with Starhopper and eventually growing in size to what is now SN8, or this flight test. Up until this point, the Starship prototypes have looked at using the Raptor engine to control the vehicle as a whole, which is important when you're under rocket power. However, for a lot of the descent, Starship aims on primarily using aerodynamic surfaces, which leads us to SN8. SN8 is the first flight test that is a high altitude flight test, reaching upwards of 12.5 kilometers. Now that might not sound high, especially when we're talking about spaceships, but this is essentially testing its ability to control itself upon descent and being able to maneuver correctly in order to safely land back on Earth, or eventually maybe Mars. So how did it all go? For anyone that was watching live, or maybe you're lucky enough to be there in person, it was incredibly exciting to actually see SN8 lift off of the ground, because just an hour or so earlier, the countdown was halted at T minus two minutes. Now by watching the ascent, it appears relatively slow, especially compared to a normal rocket launch. But you have to remember, this rocket is not going into space, it's only representing a test vehicle. After a minute and 40 seconds into flight, the first Raptor engine cuts off, and appears to cause a very slight fire around the engine mounts, but apparently isn't too big of an issue later into the flight. After three minutes and 12 seconds, the second Raptor engine cuts off and appears to swivel into the remaining lit engine. But again, this isn't a major effect on the flight and as a whole continues to perform what we expect to be nominally. At four minutes and 40 seconds into the flight, the last Raptor engine cuts off. At the same time, we could see the rearward flaps turn to steer SN8 back towards the landing pad. Here, the aerodynamic effects of the vehicle are taking control. Now, very quickly after this, the reaction control services, or the RCS, is essentially helping to steer the vehicle back in the direction that they want to go. At this point, SN8 is basically falling out of the sky. Right after five minutes into the flight, SN8 gets about horizontal and starts to head back into the direction it had originally came from. Although it appears that Starship is just falling out of the sky, this is exactly what SpaceX wants it to do. You see, by increasing the amount of area that's coming in contact with the wind that's essentially blowing by it, it's creating drag. And this drag is reducing the speed of SN8, meaning that if you're able to increase your drag even more and reduce your speed as much as possible, you're essentially saving fuel. And the more fuel you can save, the more efficient the rocket is. Therefore, this maneuver is very important in reducing the overall speed of the rocket before performing the landing burn. I wouldn't necessarily relate this to like a plane flying, but maybe the best ratio is a flying squirrel that is primarily just gliding to where it wants to go. As it is falling through the sky, you can see that the flaps near the nose are moving. I'm guessing that this is helping keep Starship level or horizontal. Otherwise, if it happened to pitch too far downwards or if the nose pitched basically straight down, then it would come a lot faster or nosedive into the ground, which would not be good. So now at six minutes and 20 seconds into the flight, it travels through a cloud, which shows the speed that it's actually falling at, which also looks really cool. The last few seconds of flight are pretty incredible, so let's just watch it happen first, and then we can discuss what actually happens.
At roughly 6 minutes and 30 seconds into the flight, two of the engines turn back on, and in a matter of seconds, Starship is oriented to be vertical, with incredible control over this massive rocket. Now, at this point, the engines have to slow the vehicle down in order to safely land, and we can see a bright green exhaust coming out of these engines. Not able to slow the rocket down fast enough, the vehicle explodes on impact. What went wrong? According to Elon Musk, the fuel header tank did not have enough pressure, therefore it didn't succeed. So what does that actually mean though? These Raptor engines, or liquid rocket engines, require different fuel sources that are generally pressurized, essentially allowing the fuel source to go from the tank into the engine itself, meaning that if it's not pressurized enough, there isn't enough fuel being sent to the engine. Therefore, at the end of the flight, if there is low pressure in the header tank, that means the rocket engine wasn't getting enough fuel and wasn't creating the thrust it needed to slow down. So therefore, in the very few last seconds of the flight itself, the Raptor engine needed more fuel, wasn't getting it, and therefore hit the ground just too fast, resulting in an explosion. You might also be wondering, what caused the bright green tint at the very end there? Was it aliens? It, it's not aliens. In past Raptor tests, the exhaust has also looked a greenish tint, and that's been associated with copper being burned from inside the rocket engine. Now, it's not 100% sure, or I'm not 100% sure whether or not it actually is copper, but if I had to guess, the Raptor engines at the very end of the flight knew that they were going too fast, were probably on full throttle trying to slow down, and potentially burned some of the components inside, resulting in copper-like exhaust having a green-like flame. But again, that's just my guess on what happened. Now after the flight and after all the smoke settles, one of the main parts that remains is the nose cone. But let's watch that landing just one more time because it's incredible to see this maneuver. Just the performance of the aerodynamic control combined with the rocket engines, but not slowing it down enough in time before the explosion. Even though SN8 was destroyed, this is an incredible success for SpaceX and the entire spaceflight industry. This is important because as I mentioned, this is the first proof of concept of these aerodynamic components or these very quick maneuvers that are going to help SpaceX land safely either on Earth or on Mars. Now they can't really use a lot of these maneuvers on the moon because there isn't really a noticeable atmosphere. But if they're able to continue to develop these prototypes and test these capabilities even further, it'll be fascinating to see how well these rockets work and how they're going to revolutionize our future in space, which is incredibly awesome to consider. Now, I personally would like to congratulate anyone that's on the Starship team or that has worked on this project as it's an incredible progression over the last few years. I'd also like to thank essentially anyone that's been creating remarkable content around the Starship prototypes over the last two years, and anyone that's been videotaping it from multiple angles in Boca Chica, because that it's just awesome work and being able to share that with everyone is amazing. If you want to check the description below, you can watch some of the other live streams that have been going on around this time frame, and also seeing some people's reactions to what happened. But with all that being said, if you have any questions about this SN8, Starship prototypes or space in general, let me know in the comments below. But thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.